Hey guys, welcome back. It's Erin at Lady Poe Designs. Now you know I could not get through the season without bringing y'all some Halloween decorations. So I've got a set of pumpkins and a couple of pictures. So I hope y'all enjoy them. So sit back, relax, and let's get into the projects. First step, we have a set of pumpkins. I got these off of Amazon's. Um, they come in a set of nine, I think. There's three of each. And we're gonna use um, Roy Cycles um, Halloween Masterboard 2 Decoupage Paper. I got this from Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. I'll, I'll leave her information down below. Um, I'm just tracing out each pumpkin deciding what I want to put on each these papers have so many options I really had to sit back and try to fit what I wanted on each but I figured it out I loved that eye and I knew I wanted the 31 and the, the owl on it so I put that on the tallest one we're going to use little back black dress and paint all of the pumpkins solid black, front, back, everywhere. We're going to take the papers and paint the back of the paper with a white swan so the paper will pop. If you put it right against that black paper, it's going to be really dull and those colors aren't going to pop through. So it's, it's going to kind of absorb that black. So we're going to take our liquid patina and just lay down a strip. Even with that paint, it, it is dry. I did let it dry. Um, we're going to lay that down with the paint side down. Spritz it just like we always do. Put a little bit more patina. Lay your line down. Spritz it. And just rub it down. Like I said, I use my fingers. A lot of people use cellophane. You can use the brush. Whatever you are comfortable using. I do that to all three. I don't ever have a problem with ripping or anything. Once they're dry, I get my zip sander and in a downward motion, I sand off the excess paper. And it gives you just a very clean cut line. It doesn't tear the paper, it has to be dry. If you try this wet, you will rip the paper. So wait till it's dry. I've tried to rush it and I've ripped it right off my project. It makes it look like it was literally painted on that wood. I don't ever have wrinkles, it never tears it, it's beautiful. I love that owl and that 31, I had to put it on there. I could not do it. Okay. Now we're gonna go with the big top and our golden ticket. Not the golden roll, golden ticket. It is a liquid patina. It's just like pennies from heaven, but it's gold and not copper. You can mix it with a big top for a medium shimmer, or you can go all in and just use it straight up and get a very dark gold shimmer to your projects. It is a sheer finish. Um, now I'm gonna go in with just some Hobby Lobby, very, very thin ribbon, wrap it around the top of the, the stump of the pumpkin. I don't ever know what that's called. What is it? What does everybody call that? Peduncle? I don't know what it's called. Um, but I'm just going to wrap a little bit around the top and I've got some wooden leaves that I got from Hobby Lobby a long time ago. Um, and just glue one at the top. There's one of each color I put on each pumpkin and then I just put a little bow at the top with the same ribbon and I do that to uh, 
each pumpkin. Um, I am going to use the lighter just to stop the fraying from the ribbon because this ribbon will fray out. Um, it's very soft. So this is just a scrap piece of wood. I'm going to take a um, little black dress and mix it with a bunch of water and make kind of like a stain. So I'm just going to rub it on there with um, a brush and then wipe it off with a baby wipe and just stain the wood black. And this is what we're going to use to put our pumpkins on. Um, you can actually leave them freestanding because they will stand up on their own. They're thick enough. You can put them in tiered trays. Um, they, they would look really cute in tiered trays actually, but I like them all together. Um, we're going to take some uh, moss and glue it down and then I was like um probably should glue the pumpkins down first because I didn't want them all jaggedy and I wanted them to sit flat so I'm going to use some wood glue and hot glue for that long term and short term hold sorry for my head <laughs> I never know when it gets in the way so we're going to glue that all over the board and then I'm going to use my favorite. I love those little shells. I got these little charms off of Timu. Actually, my husband got them for me. And it came with a little bat, some skulls, um, little spiders. So I'm going to glue those all over with the Putka pods and make me a little pumpkin patch down at the bottom of my pumpkins. But I'm going to glue those all over just wherever I feel like they need to go. I'm going to stack some of them. Um, stack some of them with the skulls. Uh, I put some of the spiders on the pumpkins. I put one on the stem of the back one. Put one coming down the side. There was only one bat in that whole package and I put it on the very front and it looks like it's hanging off the front of it. See it? I think these turned out really cute. I love recycled paper. I think this is a really, really cute paper to use for Halloween. There's so many options, so many different designs. I love the wood leaves at the top. Um, and of course, the Putka pods are always my favorite. I just love the way they look like little pumpkins. Tell me what y'all think down in the comments. Okay, for project number two. We're going to do a picture. Now, I've had this picture forever. As you can see, it's very stained. It's nasty. It's been sitting on my porch for probably the past five years. Every holiday, you can see it. it's water stained. It's gross. <laughs> I've been meaning to redo it for the longest time. So I took it outside and sanded it off. And we're going to do a coat of white swan. Uh, actually, two coats. I'm going to do two coats of white swan over the entire, I think it's MDF, it's not real wood, um, but it's just uh, wired down to that chicken wire and then it's just a wood frame. Um, so I'm just going to do two coats of that. Let that dry and then this is the paper we're going to use. I love this paper. I got this paper at decoposhcentral.com and it's called The Fox's Den. And I thought it would be really cute since the frame has chicken wire on it. Um, I thought, oh, okay, fox, you know, fox in the chicken house. Okay, I'll put the foxes on it. So we're going to take our liquid patina, same as we always do, lay down our line, 
spritz the paper. Now this is rice paper, so it is a little bit more durable than the Roy Cycle paper. Um, so I'm going to lay down my line just like I usually do and rub it down and simply repeat the process. Now I had a different idea and I didn't do it. Um, I was going to actually write something on this sign um, along with the fox picture. Um, but I didn't know if it would actually transcend or actually hit with people. Um, I, when I was a kid, I remember a commercial with a guy coming on the TV saying, um, you know, it's 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. Do you know where your kids are? And it was like a real ominous, creepy commercial. Well, I was going to write around the frame, it's Halloween. Do you know where your chickens are? But I didn't know if people would get it. So <laughs> I didn't do it. But anyway... Yeah, it's a thought. I, I think I think too much into my project sometimes. Anyway, I digress. But anyway, I sand. I got my zip sander and sanded off the excess paper. Went around the sides of it. Now you'll see there's a line at the bottom because it did not cover the entire thing. Well, we're going to take sandy blonde, weathered wood, and layered chocolate. And we're going to try to match the painting um you're not gonna match well you're like you're doing it for me i'm not gonna match it exactly but i want to get it at least close enough to camouflage it um because i'm gonna put some molds down there that i cast with resin so i'm gonna go across the entire bottom with sandy blonde and dry that And then start going in with my weathered wood and my layered chocolate. And I'm just going to blend and blend it. Now, I speed this up a lot because I am never satisfied when I'm doing art like this. Because to my eye, it never looks right. So I will fiddle with it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it until there's about an inch of paint on the canvas. So <laughs> I did this for way too long. So this is like eight times sped up and I'm not even joking. I did this way too long. Um, but I, I go across the entire bottom and try to make shadows in a way to kind of um, blend in their jackets. It almost, at the end, it almost kind of looks like they're walking in like fog or smoke. It actually looks kind of cool. It turned out really good. Um, but I just, <laughs> I just hold all the brushes in my hand and I keep dipping one of them back into water. And see, I use my finger. Remember I told you, if I don't get it all over my fingers and whatever medium I'm working with, I'm not happy. So... I just keep dipping back and forth and whatever color I feel like needs to go, I, I just keep going back and forth and blend and blend and dip it in water and yeah. <laughs> see, I, I, I didn't feel like that, that corner was, you'll see I'll keep going back to that corner. That corner didn't satisfy me. That, yep. <laughs> That little spot right there irritated me too because it started lifting on his sleeve. But that's just, I think that's me being more critical of myself, which I do that a lot. So that's something I need to work on. I should have sped it up more. I didn't realize I left this much in there. Sorry, guys. We'll get there. Come on.
Okay, so I, I dry it down. I'm like, okay, yeah, it looks good enough. So I get the castings and, oh, well, okay. Nope, still working on that corner. <laughs> Had to do a little bit more. Oh, I had to make him darker. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> See that corner? It did. It, it irritated me. Okay. I think I was satisfied with it now. Okay. So I did these castings. I always have castings made. Um, this is out of the olive crust mold. Um, I usually have castings made typically out of every mold that I have. Um, so I took these and thought they looked pretty cool with their suits and, you know, kind of old timey ish, um, kind of like wrought iron. And to me, that just kind of spoke to their, the era in which their suits were. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how my mind thinks, but um, so I painted them with the weathered wood and I'm going to I think I do two coats on all of the castings. <clears throat> and there's two scrolls, two little half moon things, and then like a, I don't know if it's like a floral it's not a floor de lis. It's I don't really know what it's called. I don't even know if it has a name. And then I paint this side of the actual MDF so it matches, kind of offsets it, matches their coats. And that's while the cast the castings are drying. I also go in and I actually start dabbing along the um, the edges of the actual board itself because if if you look closer to it, it actually has splattered paint all over it. So to me, it's like, okay, well, this will blend it in more because of that bottom line. So I'm like, more it'll blend it in, the more, the better. So I'm like, okay. So I start putting more dabs on it everywhere. And then I go across the bottom and did it along the sides and the bottom as well. So it actually brought in all of that black in their jackets, all of the brown, everything. So I'm going to go cross. Go all the way down. I actually came across this website by accident. I was looking at different pictures of rice paper and um, just different images for Halloween just to get inspiration. And I came across this website and saw this picture and just thought it was really, really cool. So now I'm, think I'm taking the weathered wood and the layered chocolate and I'm sporadically going back and forth and painting both of them on the frame. So it's not going to be, you know, like one color on one plank and then one on another plank. It's kind of chippy, but not really. It's it almost I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I just went back and forth. I dipped it in one color one time and then the next time I dipped it in another color and I just went back and forth. Um, it just, it actually turned out really cool. I don't, I don't know why I did it the way that I did, to be honest with you. I just felt like it needed to be done like that. So 
So I mean, look, that looks like it's the layered chocolate. And I'm trying to get all of it that's showing because it would irritate me if any of that was showing. <laughs> Yeah, that's the layered chocolate. So see, I just go just random spots. And then whatever I didn't paint with the layered chocolate, I go back in and I paint with the weathered wood. And I do paint the back of this as well because these are all of my pieces are for resale so I always paint the backs and finish them I was trying not to get it on that chicken wire because I didn't want it to look dirty but it was inevitable it was gonna happen <laughs> Luckily, DIY paints is are water soluble, so I just took a baby wipe and wiped them off, wiped off the chicken wire. So very easy to clean off. So now I'm just filling in where I didn't have the layered chocolate with the weathered wood and. Going a little bit onto the canvas on that one as well, <clears throat> just to bring that color up there as well. After this was done, I really could not believe how much this transformed this picture. Like from the before and after, if you go to the very front and then fast forward to the finished product and like from the where it started to where it ended, it's just like, wow, it's so different. But I really like the way it turned out. I have a little bit more to fill in and then we're going to glue the castings on and I just use um, tight bond wood glue to glue those on. I love those little tools that I got. I got those off of Amazon. I don't have to use my brushes to spread the wood glue onto my castings or my clay molds or anything. I can use those and literally just set them aside and the wood glue dries those tips or silicone and it dries on those tips and the next time I go to use it, it just peels off and I'll throw it away and it doesn't ruin any of my brushes. I love those things. And I have like, they they come in like five different sizes, and two of them are actual like silicone brushes, so they're pretty neat. So putting the little floral thing on, I felt like I put it too high, so I'm moving it down. Do some cleanup, even though it dries clear. I'm gonna wipe the excess off. And glue the other two little pieces on with that same glue. <laughs> if I can get it on right.
If y'all see the band-aid on my thumb, I was sanding a piece of wood and me and the grinder had a fight. Yeah, it, it wasn't pretty. The pumpkins that I made last week. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to take the clear wax from DIY. And again, I get all my DIY products from Sammy at unicorndustdesigns.com. I will have her information in the description box below. We're going to clear wax all of our castings to lock in that clay base paint. DIY paint, paint has to be clear waxed or top coated with some kind of uh, sealant. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to put a clear wax all over the castings and the frame to seal the paint. And I'm putting clear wax on first because I'm actually going to go back in with dark wax and darken the bottom of that canvas up. I keep calling it a canvas even though I know it's MDF wood, but I'm just used to calling it a canvas. Uh, even though I know um, I want to make that darker. So I'm going to put the white wax on it because the dark wax is going to be easier to wipe off. So it's going to be easier to control. So I'm going to go in with dark wax and that very well used dark wax brush <laughs> that I don't think I've ever cleaned. I don't think you should have a reason to clean it, do you? Um, okay, so not really seeing a use to stay on the casting so I'm just going to go all over the bottom because I want it to look dirty on the bottom so I'm going to go all over the bottom of the wood and I'm going to go on the frame as well so it's going to darken that paint on the frame as well even more I love the way the DIY waxes work just in general. Um, not only do they seal the paints, but they don't give it a sheen. And I love a matte finish. Um, if I could have a matte finish on every project, that would be ideal for me. Um, sometimes that's just not feasible, but it's okay. Now we're going to go in with a golden rule, which is the wax, and we're going to go over all those castings. The thing is with the golden rule and the weathered wood, it makes those castings look like cast iron, and it's such a cool effect. I even take an artist brush and go into a couple of the molds because they have raised like little dimples inside. I'm going to take my finger and go around just the little corners of the frame just for some little accents. And the transformation of this picture, y'all, I think was absolutely amazing. I love it. I love, love, love this. I'm actually thinking about keeping it, but I have not made up my mind. I love the foxes. I love the chicken wire, of course, and I love the way those castings came out. Tell me what y'all think down in the comments. Okay, project three in our last one. I also, I thrifted this one, this frame from um, Souls Harbor here where I live in my town. This is another picture from Decapaw Central. 
Um, it's just a crow. It's a really pretty frame with some flaw, uh, flaw, flaw <laughs> with some fall uh, leaves. Um, it's also on rice paper. Rice paper is a little bit harder to tear, um, but you can tear it. So I'm just going to take a brush with some water and tear off the edges. I don't want a clean edge. So I'm, I'm going to decoupage it or put it on that glass and do the whole mirrored effect thing, the antique mirror thing. So I'm going to rip the edges off and I'm going to do it very uneven. Um, I'm going to take one of the corners off too because I don't want this to look uh, purposely done if that makes sense um i want it to look like it was worn off over time you know so i'm just gonna go around and very unevenly take off more some places take off less take off a whole corner on one one spot take out a big chunk there Yep, that's where I was like, yeah, I'm just going to take that whole corner off. <laughs> the colors that they get in these rice papers, they do a really good job. Um, I'm using that distressed ink and putting it along the edges to kind of make it look like it's burned. That rice paper just soaks that up. Um, I find that if I try to use any kind of the liquid patina or stuff, it kind of soaks into those fibers. But if I use this, it stays at the edges. Um, it's just personal preference for me. I just like the way it works. Um, so I've cleaned the glass. I'm going to put this image down on the glass with the liquid patina. And same way we always do it, I'm going to do just a line of the liquid patina, spritz my paper, and lay it down with my fingers. And rice paper is a little thicker, so I always go a little bit on the back of the rice paper with the liquid patina just to kind of soak it a little bit. So I'm going to go all the way down, get this adhered to the glass. And I'm going to do one real thick coat on the back of it just to make sure that it's going to stay on there. And see, I'm going around the edges and kind of pushing those extra fibers in because they have little fibers that stick out everywhere and it kind of looks hairy. <laughs> Here I'm taking a 99%, or I think it's 99% alcohol. It's very, very strong, just rubbing alcohol. Um, and getting the extra uh, liquid patina off of the glass. So when I go to spray it with the looking glass, it will be clean. So I took it outside. My husband filmed me spraying it. I did three coats. Now I'm going to take some nail polish remover and take some of it off in certain spots and just make it look like it's been distressed, make it look old, and then I'm going to spray some gold metallic and then some black over that. Now we're going to take some black velvet and just do one good coat on the frame. I actually liked the color of the frame, the, the green. It was a pretty green and it went with the paper well. So I kept the green. I just did a coat of black and I just did a very heavy distress with a baby wipe. Um, so it, it came out to be looking, it looks like a very chippy um, finish. Uh, I finished it with Big Top 
and we're going to put the glass back in. That's what it looks like after I did the, the gold and the black. Y'all, I was so nervous putting those nails back on there. I thought I was going to put that thing through the glass. Y'all, ooh. <laughs> I was, ooh. That made me so nervous. So I'm going to go in with the golden rule and just do just a little bit around the edges of the frame just to bring out the gold in the paper and in the mirror itself. I'm going to clean the mirror with some window or some glass cleaner. And this is how she turned out. I really, really liked how this turned out. I love the antique finish of the mirror. I love how the the frame just speaks for itself. It's nice and plain. It doesn't take away from the image. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. As always, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I can't thank y'all enough for all the sweet comments y'all have been leaving. It means the world to me. Please don't forget to like and share and subscribe and as always remember you're beautiful and you can do hard things bye guys